So, fearing this story is sounding 100% like coke ravings, Korean Britney Spears brings back the dramatic tone. Just try to listen to this with any hint of seriousness. A thousand knobs is about a rare knob who comes once in a generation of a knob who is called the Madam Knob. A scrunt will do anything to kill a Madam Knob, even forget his fears of the tattoo tip. She know that she's a Madam Knob. Okay, I'm sure Shyamalan is hearing this really intense dramatic story, but to the rest of the world, all we can hear is a thousand knives, a rare knife, the Madam Knob. Kill a Madam Knob. The Madam Knob herself. She know that she's a Madam Knob. Once in a generation of a Knob. I would give anything if the twist to this movie was that the entire time it was Pinky and the Brain trying to take over the world. Literally, every single problem would be fixed if they just do that twist. It's a Warner Brothers movie, make it happen! Speaking of which, the master writer himself is told that his writing is going to change the world and give inspiration, I shit you not here, to the future president. This boy will become leader of this country and begin a movement of great change. But also, yeah, gets even better. His ideas will be so dangerous that someone will eventually take his life because of them. And yet, he still chooses to write the story, sacrificing himself not only for his art, but for the world. Wow. Is it windy on that egotistical high horse that you built for yourself? I mean, Christ, you can see his boner growing with every praising word speak of you and your words. Your book will be the seeds of many of his great thoughts. It will be the seeds of change. Ooh, now that's a messy story. So Giamatti is told that Rufio's mother will only tell the rest of the story if she can see him like a child. You have to make her see you as a child. Innocent. So, I can't even. Just watch. Tell her it's a beautiful story. Are there are there any parts that might be good to hear? <laughs> okay, so let's say this represents the world of sanity, and this represents the edge of sanity, and this represents the world of insanity. You would be on Mars, you are so friggin' gone! Because we have no idea where the hell you are to come up with a scene this goddamn bonkers! I mean, what the hell is going on? Is this what you do with all your Oscar-nominated actors? Make them look like they're jerking off sideways while peeing like a dog? That's not acting like a child, that's acting like three lobotomies were given to you! In maple syrup! What are you?! So the NARF can't say anything about her world for reasons, but it's okay because she touches her ear to answer yes or no questions as that doesn't count for reasons. So there's a symbolist, a guardian, a healer, and a guild he's supposed to find in order to help her. And before you say anything, yes, this simple bedtime story is as goddamn complicated as a freaking D&D game. Do you know who the symbolist or interpreter is? I don't know. Let's roll the dice to find out. So he goes to the crossword guy and his increasingly strange son. This picture on the cereal box is supposed to make you feel happy. I feel sad like that time you forgot to pick me up at school. Are we in Wonderland? He finds the others as well and takes them to a naked, cut-up lady he's keeping in his shower. This raises no concerns. Interpreter will tell us what to do. Nine letters across is the word essential. Uh, I, th I, th I, th I thought that was weird. Mm. Really? That's weird? You're using a crossword puzzle to predict the future in front of a naked woman who's been kidnapped by the sideways guy? And that's friggin' weird! Who does that? The funny thing is, even by bedtime story standards, there's practically no action in any of this. I mean, did Shyamalan actually read this to his kids every night? 
And then they sat around the shower for a bit, doing crosswords, as Mr. Keep toured the apartments for a fifth time to talk to even more people. Daddy, can you read us Snow White? Oh, kids, that story doesn't have nearly enough references to another story to make it interesting. This is a bedtime story for a new generation. But it's boring! We can barely stay awake! That means it's working. So he apparently can see the scrunt by walking backwards and looking in a mirror. Why? Because it's less complicated than doing jumping jacks and looking through a fruit loop. Just get used to nothing being explained. The scrunt scares him away, but to be fair, you were asking Paul Giamatti to protect you. What'd you think was gonna happen? In fact, you saved him the first time! You really thought this was the guy who was gonna be on top of things? There is no originality left in the world, Mr. Heat. So they work on a new strategy. The scrunt will hide unless he cannot hide in his environment. Doesn't that go without saying? He'll hide unless he can't hide? So they decide to throw a party to distract the scrunt. Yeah, always good to throw other people's lives in there. As we're realizing getting closer and closer to the end that this really shouldn't have been called Lady in the Water. She barely does a friggin' thing! What they should have called it is whispering, because that's all anybody does! It is not you. I'm sorry. I can hear myself finding your purpose. It is not time. You haven't written anything. The west of this land will grow up in a home. Turn it up! Turn it up! So they wait for the eagle to come and get her, as apparently nobody in the party would notice that. But hey, if they don't notice a grass dog attacking a woman and dragging her into the woods, I guess they wouldn't notice that either. Oh, by the way, a grass dog attacks her and drags her into the woods. Oh no, this is terrible! What should we do? More crosswords! Big shock, they start to ask, what if this is all a little crazy? Why are you so certain that I am the interpreter and they are the guild? I asked someone what kind of person would be so arrogant to presume to know the intention of another human being who has put this young girl's life in jeopardy. What heartless demon who gives points of view on art has doomed mankind for all eternity? <gasps> the Critic! <laughs> Only he praised Shyamalan, I mean any random writers of their genius. But no, he had to point out the faults of movies like Signs, I mean any random story! This is all so obviously about Shyamalan, I mean Shyamalan, I mean Shyamalan, I mean you! If you were Shyamalan. Look at this, he writes the critics so one-dimensionally that he actually confuses real life for a movie. It's precisely the moment where the mutation or beast Will attempt to kill an unlikable side character. In stories where there has been no prior cursing, nudity, killing, the unlikable character will narrowly escape. He may even be given a humorous moment to allow the audience to feel good about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is really hard. It's really hard for me to get through this. I just, cause, cause that's all they are. That's all critics are. It's literally just my life is a movie, everything is connected to movie, I am robot, I judge and hate everything, there is no personal vendetta going on at all, it is about you, the personal artist at home, it is not about one individual person who probably is in this film somewhere, I mean, I can't see him at all, it's just too subtle, but maybe he's in the movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is so unprofessional, I, I, I should stay serious, I, that won't happen again, I'll like, just get out a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, what happened again? I promise. <clears throat> so, after that stellar satire of criticism, really SNL worthy, they start to wonder if anyone else could possibly be the interpreter. The hands of the guild will be needed plus two others. It is a ceremony of seven sisters. Sisters? The guild is women? You will need a man who has no secrets and one whose opinion is highly respected as witnesses. To touch together with their hearts as one to bring strength to the moment. Nice joy. You will need a man who has no secrets and one whose opinion is highly respected as witnesses. <laughs> Not stuck.
stoned, you are not high, you are seeing this correctly. A little boy with incredible detail is predicting the future of an ancient civilization by staring at cereal boxes. Cereal boxes, oh my God, I'm crying. I'm actually crying, this is so funny. What is he going to see? The cookie crook will go cuckoo for Cocoa Boss when Captain Crunch's neck goes snack, crackle, and pop, and it'll be great. Were the fortune cookies too hard to understand? <laughs> I can't breathe! Almost hurry. This will all be over in moments. Now, on to the spice rack, where I will predict the second coming of Jesus! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, I just came a bit. I read it wrong. I thought it said she will lead a ceremony of seven sisters to bring strength to the moment. But it really just said, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It turns out Giamatti has to be the healer because, well, symbolically it ties to his family and that dead horse is so kicked you can see the Nike symbol indented into it. It of course brings her back to life as the big Shyamalan twist is finally revealed. Oh my god. Reggie, Reggie, just keep looking at his eyes! Oh my god, it takes place at the cove! Wait, I already knew that. Why'd you cut to that? What the hell's the twist? He's the guardian. Reggie's the guardian? Wow, I didn't know Cliff Notes could serve as twist now. I mean, uh, ooh, you really got me, uh, I have to look at the movie a whole different way now. And then apparently, these things come out. I am Groot. Your ass is grass. <laughs> the eagles are coming! The eagles are coming! And no kidding. That's the ending. Yeah, the eagle picks her up, and it just stops. Even Giamatti has a look on his face like, That's it? Are you kidding me? My two-minute cameo in Downton Abbey was worth more of my time than this. People, I know the happening is fun, but where else can you see a narf outrunning a scrunt with Paul Giamatti waving his leg and touching himself in front of two women helped by a guy who can predict the future through crosswords who gave birth to a prophet who can read mythologies that are part of a complete breakfast with a critic who dares call this all insane portrayed as the bad guy with tree hulks beating up grass stains with teeth while a giant eagle picks up a whispering tart whose only job was to tell a person to write a book and the twist centers around a guy we saw only for two minutes in the the opening. How can this not be a masterpiece of madness? Complete and total entertaining madness. So, to show my appreciation for this incredible experience, I am finally going to give Shyamalan exactly what he wants. You summoned. Sit down, Shyamalan. All right. Tell me about your genius method in making this film. Really? Well, I was trying to get across how creative artists are always kept down by cynicism. Ah, so the woman's story actually represent the artist's story. Yeah, I, I never knew if I made that clear enough. And am I correct in thinking that the character of the critic is a subtle jab to people who don't understand your work? Exactly. You don't think that came off too strong, do you? Of course not. I thought it was downplayed, actually. So I wanted to get across that all the people in the world who criticize, they're the real death of dreams. And how did you come up with those incredible names? It sounds like it came from a language that's existed for years. That was my intention! You see, I'm a big fan of creating other worlds, and other worlds have different sounding names. So I said to myself, what sounds weird and otherworldly? A narf. You just hear that word and immediately you think a beautiful woman.
Not. <laughs>